For over five decades, one of the greatest sights of the U.S. Space and Rocket Center space line has been the Mercury Redstone rocket, the first rocket that took an American to space. But what is the rocket story? Well, this is that story. Pulled up at the launch pad, I walked out and looked at that huge rocket, Redstone rocket, and I thought, well, now, there is that little rascal, and uh, and I'm gonna get up on top and fly that thing. All right, uh, lift off, and the clock has started. On May 5th, 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard became the first American in space on top of a Mercury Redstone rocket. Alan Shepard's journey made him a national hero and brought the United States neck and neck in the space race with the Soviet Union. But the eventual success of Shepard's mission was never a foregone conclusion. After the space race started with the respective launches of Sputnik 1, the Soviet Union's first satellite, and Explorer 1, the United States' first satellite, the next step for both countries was to get a human into space. With the founding of NASA in 1958, the goal of human spaceflight was made a priority with Project Mercury. When it came time to decide which rocket would be used to launch the first American into space, NASA chose the Redstone rocket because it was the oldest in the U.S. fleet, with many successful flights already under its belt. In fact, it was a member of the Redstone family of rockets, the Jupiter C rocket, that launched Explorer 1. The Redstone had proven to be by far the most reliable rocket built to its time. So it was the only rocket that I guess anyone was able to feel safe for putting a man on. The original Redstone rocket was designed and developed beginning in 1950 at Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama by Dr. Werner Von Braun and his team of rocket engineers. The Redstone was so named because of the red rocks and soil found in the Huntsville region. This is a model of the U.S. Army's Redstone guided missile, the largest American ballistic missile to have reached the test firing stage. It becomes the foundation for the development of the much longer range missile. The original Redstone rocket, the PGM-11 Redstone, was a short range surface to surface ballistic missile for the U.S. Army with more variants to follow including the PGM-19 Jupiter, the Jupiter C, and the Mercury Redstone. The Mercury Redstone itself was similar to the Jupiter C with their elongated fuel tanks, which allowed for suborbital flight. However, the first flight test of the Mercury Redstone did not go as planned. On November 21st, 1960, the Mercury Redstone's engine ignited and lifted off the launch pad about four inches before prematurely shutting down and jettisoning the escape rocket. The failure was eventually attributed to two electrical cables separating in the wrong order. A month later, another unmanned Mercury Redstone was successfully tested, albeit at a flight trajectory too steep for a human passenger. The next step was to test the rocket with a flight trajectory more suitable for a human. Enter Ham the Chimpanzee. In total, there were six chimpanzees who went through training in the Mercury simulators. After three weeks of training, they selected Ham. On January 31st, 1961, Ham was strapped into the Mercury capsule atop the Mercury Redstone rocket. However, the rocket overaccelerated during launch and forced an early abort by the closed loop abort system. The overacceleration sent Ham flying too high, too fast, and too far, pulling 14.7 Gs during re entry rather than the intended 12 Gs. Even so, Ham returned to Earth safely, having performed his tasks well. However, this meant to Dr. Von Braun that the Mercury Redstone was still not ready for a human passenger, requiring a final booster development flight. On March 24, 1961, the Mercury Redstone booster development launch was a success, allowing NASA to go ahead with Shepard's launch. However, the delay in Shepard's launch allowed the Soviet Union's Yuri Gagarin to become the first human launched to space. After many delays filled with trial and error, the Mercury Redstone rocket executed its job to perfection in launching Alan Shepard to space a little over a month later. I would like to congratulate not only our employees, 
at the Marshall Peace Flight Center, but all other organizations and people who over the years have lent their enthusiasm and support, which have culminated in this remarkable accomplishment of putting an American astronaut in space. The flight was a great day for Commander Shepard. It was a great day for the Marshall Space Flight Center. It was a great day for the Army, and it was a great day for all Americans. It was also a great day for all the steel, the aluminum, the chemicals, and the electronics that went into the Redstone. The old Redstone did not let America or the free world down. Shepard's flight inspired the country, including the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. Just three weeks after Shepard becoming the first American in space, Kennedy challenged the country to go one step further while giving a speech to a joint session of Congress. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. With America now aiming to reach the moon by the end of the 1960s, NASA set to work on achieving that goal. On July 21st, 1961, astronaut Gus Grissom became the second American in space, being launched on the final voyage of a Mercury Redstone rocket. All subsequent Project Mercury missions went on to use the more powerful Atlas rocket that would be capable of placing the Mercury capsule into orbit, an all-important next step if America was to reach the moon. Even though a Mercury Redstone rocket would never fly again, their legacy would go on to inform the creation of the Saturn I and Saturn IB rockets that would in turn lead to the mighty Saturn V rocket that would get America to the moon with the Apollo program. It is that very legacy that was highlighted by the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, when the museum opened in 1970 with a Mercury Redstone on display, leading toward the Saturn I and Saturn V rockets. The Redstone rocket is just one of the many launch vehicles you will see here in the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, the largest collection of rockets and space hardware in the world. In 2018, after nearly 50 years out in the elements, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center's Mercury Redstone rocket was taken down for preservation. Contracting with Airy Aerospace, the Rocket Center's Mercury Redstone rocket was taken back to where it was first born at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center for preservation. When we have an opportunity to repair a piece of hardware or refurbish it and bring it back to like new, it's, it's a reminder for the future generations of where we've been. And it gives us an opportunity to look forward to the future and inspire future generations of young men and women to participate in our space program. With work completed on the Mercury Redstone, the next step was to return the rocket to its home at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. In May of 2024, the Mercury Redstone returned to the Rocket Center's space line so that this little rascal can continue to inspire for generations to come.